In this video, we're taking a look at the door lock actuator for the Audi A4 B8. It's a part that I have already changed on my previous car. And because I had it in the garage, I took the decision of taking it apart and trying to analyze the possible causes of it failing. I'll show you pictures of the disassembly of the part and how we reached this point. We managed to break down our actuator in two big uh, areas, two big components. We have a part that is predominantly mechanical. This is the part that actually does the locking bit. And this part will interface with the second bit that um, controls or acts more of a interface with the electrical system of the vehicle. Whenever we have a component that is interfacing metallic parts with plastic parts, we can think that possible points of failure will be the point where our plastic bits are interacting with the metal. If I remember correctly, from a mechanical point of view, this actuator was working properly on my vehicle. The issue that I was having more and more was the fact that the car wouldn't want to lock. And this makes me think that or after doing a bit of more research and knowing that Volkswagen vehicles were known for switches failing, I'm tempted of considering that a switch was the main failure point. So coming back to our metallic um, part of the door lock, I'll show you some pictures with how it looked before taking it apart. Looking at it and playing around with the mechanism, everything seems to work as it should. I couldn't identify any uh, specific points of failure on the plastics. I couldn't find anything that was snapped or looked out of place. We move on to the second big part and this is the one that I'm suspecting to be the root cause of my issues. We're seeing that this bit interfaces or connects or acts on the mechanical part by these two plastic elements with some springs. Overall, the construction is quite nice. I would say overcomplicated, but nice. We wouldn't say that it's an issue or the failure wasn't an issue due to water corrosion or other stuff because the unit is very well sealed. All the electronic components are protected with that type of plastic silicon inside of the actuator two DC motors act on gearing that will control these two bits and the second one is doing this I'm expecting to or I'm thinking that one of them is in charge of locking the doors the normal function and the second one is that special lock where you press your, your door lock for more than a few seconds and no matter what is happening in the vehicle, the doors are not locking or are not unlocking once that is engaged. Of course, all of these functions are checked by the use of some micro switches. And also, so this is where the normal door key would interact with. We have a micro switch here too that is picking up a signal and telling something to our electronic part of the circuit. From a repairability point of view, if we would consider changing only the switches, this is something that I was just checking to see if it is possible from the outside without removing the cover, you would have been tempted of saying that yes, it's an easy swap of the switches. But if we look underneath, these switches are glued in place. So repairing them is almost impossible. Or I don't think that anybody will break through that epoxy to change that switch. Looking at the assembly, interesting design quite intricate, I would say a bit of over engineering. However, it works until the point that it fails. Interesting to see 
what is inside. We don't have any stepper motors, we have normal DC motors and all the switching and I'm thinking that many uh, or a big part of the magic is done on an electronic board over there. I hope that this video gave you a little bit of insight on what is happening in your door lock for Volkswagen, Audi, Seats. They should be sharing a very similar part. Hopefully you'll get inspired and I shall be seeing you the next time.